one. We open on a 1970s living room, only it's 2016. The furniture and decor is obviously very dated, faded and worn. Yellow stained shag carpet all over. There are dark wood stairs that have a landing to curve around into the room, a bar on the right of those stairs with some bright orange stools. There is a landline on the bar, a couch in the center with two chairs on either side and a coffee table with coasters, some bad fake flowers and a candy dish full of Andy's candies. Also a side table with a tacky hula girl lamp on it next to the couch. A bookshelf, large, fits in the corner and goes up to the ceiling, filled to the brim with books that probably have never been read, a lot of encyclopedias and a record player, a door to the left and right, and a desk on the left side of the left door, complete with a worn leather chair. And off to the far right is a fireplace, brick, and covered in family photos and knickknacks. Colleen is sitting at the desk on her laptop, probably on Facebook, commenting on her kids' stuff. Because, you know, moms. She is about 50, and she'd be sure to tell you every time someone who was young said they were old. A message pops up. It's extremely cryptic, so naturally she is confused. Tim? Tim! She gets up and walks to the bottom of the stairs. Tim! What? Can you come down here, please? I think there's something wrong with the computer again. What? I'm scared there's another virus on the computer. Could you come down here, please? Tim! Tim enters down the stairs. He, he's in his early 50s and he's starting to go gray, but he is still handsome in that dad sort of way. What? What? I'm, I'm coming, what's the matter? I, I think the computer has a virus. I got another one of those crypt, cryptic messages asking for money from some no-name account. Honey, I told you just delete and block those accounts, plain and simple. It's just some scammer. Are you sure? I'm sure. He walks over to the computer and does so. See, nothing to worry about. It's all gone. I hope whatever or whoever it is gives up. That's the second time this week and it's the sixth time in the last several months that this has happened. Desperate people do desperate things. He goes to leave. Oh, did you get the kids' bedrooms all set up? Ricky's room is as clean as it can be and Willow has her attic as always. He tries to leave again. And the bathroom. Towels and soaps are where they should be. He tries again but she has forced him into conversation. Oh, I wish this family didn't always have to get together under the pretense of death. What with your mother's funeral last year and the whole debacle that came with that. The trips were nice, however. Oh, I'm sure for you. While I was stuck here freezing, curse your mother for doing charity work in a tropical region. Ah, yes because regaining a deceased loved one's estate from a semi-socialist government was a walk in the park. Well, how could she have known that it would get to that point? She probably did. That's why she didn't leave much to bring back. Yeah, I guess that's true. There wasn't much to gain back. Not after you took several trips there. Yeah, well, my mother was always an odd one, but smart. Mm. And always so sweet. She used to call me Renita, remember? I remember. I'm still sad I never got to visit her down there, but I still have her Christmas letters. I wonder if I still have one of her old recipes somewhere. That would give us a chance to actually use the dining room for the first time in forever. What do you mean? We use it all the time. Oh, now just because it's the only place I can use a sewing machine doesn't mean we use it all the time. What about our friendly dinner parties? What friendly dinner parties are you trying to allude to? No, the dinner parties. No, please elaborate. Tim is at a loss. He shrugs. Well, it's your fault for raising such successful children. Mm, and it's your fault for always being busy and then them to taking that as an example. Busy? Me? Never. <laughs> More like busy. You always. But it paid off, didn't it? Uh, I guess. It just 
really helped me put all my focus on my work and the kids. So in a way, it was my fault they're successful. Hey, I said I had some hand in that too, remember? I, I, I never said you didn't. I just saying I had a little more. Raising those two wasn't easy, you know? Ah, uh, yes, because it's so difficult raising them in this little house in the suburbs. <sighs> Try dreadful. I'll never understand why people want to live on top of each other like that. It was a community fad. The 50s shaped the country towards a sense of community. That was back when people could afford to do that and everyone was in everybody's business. <laughs> Not like people still aren't in other people's business or anything. Now, well, you know what I mean. Nowadays, you can't buy a house till you're our age and have saved every penny since you were born. Or? Try scamming people from the internet. Now, if you're going to try and scam money from me, at least try to give me some sob story, not just badger me for it. You mean like church? <laughs> okay, listen. I know where every cent I give to Father Alexandrius is going. You mean back into your own pocket for the restoration work? If that's part of it, then yes. But all I'm saying is that some of those paintings have never looked better. <laughs> <laughs> well at least you can be assured that the service will be beautifully spoken on saturday mm. my father always loved the way he ran service partially the reason i started going back to church are you sure it just wasn't your old age and need to feel some sort of hope again you are older than me therefore i lost hope a long time ago surely you can't mean that of course i do and don't call me Shirley. <laughs> Tim moves behind the bar and fixes a drink. He's back on his phone. Honey, are you really going to start drinking now? I mean... What? It's just one drink, Colleen. I don't think it's gonna hurt. I promise, just this one. Fine. He puts everything away. I'm sorry. Colleen walks over and throws her arms around him. I love you. But I'm still going to go check those rooms. Don't you trust me? <laughs> I do, just not with cleaning. He kisses him and egg kisses him and exits up the stairs. After she's gone, he quickly takes a swig from a bottle and puts it back, then proceeds to check his phone. He then gazes at the computer runs to it and manages to hack it and shut down the cryptic Facebook account. What is he hiding? After a while of this, we hear a loud thud upstairs. Tim has managed to move back to the couch before Colleen re-enters with a cardboard box, looking very uncomfortable. Um, I found this box in Ricky's room. Well, I tripped over it is more like it. Colleen, there's boxes all over that room. Um, no, not like this. I just, I... Well, what's in it? I don't know, Tim. I think I should just, I should just put it back. He's our son and... Come on, it can't be that bad. Well... It's probably just normal teenage boy stuff. You know, probably like the stuff I had when I was his age and... She and Tim meet in the center and open the box. What's inside stops Tim mid-sentence. Um, okay. <laughs> Wow. You had this kind of stuff and you were his age? I married you, didn't I? Tim pulls out a gay porn magazine. Tim, don't touch that. You, you don't know where that's been. I think I have a pretty good idea of where it's been. The box was just poking out from under the bed and when I, I tripped on it, it spilled and- Tim Colleen, slams the magazine back into the box. Please, just put those obscenities back where you found them. No, Tim, we- Put it back. She jumps and obeys. She exits back up the stairs. Tim sits and sighs. Why him? Why now? He grabs a remote and flips to the sports channel. After a few seconds, he returns to his phone. Colleen re-enters, tentatively. She tries to sneak to the kitchen. I don't want a single word spoken about this. Of course, darling. She stops and chooses to sit and con console her husband instead. You know, 
he does that rocky thing at the movies sometimes. It was next to the box of that stuff. After all, uh, what about Cheyenne? What about her? I mean, they've been happy together for such a long time. <sighs> I need some air. Tim goes to leave. Tim, can we just please talk about this? Colleen? Not now. Tim exits. Colleen is left on the couch. We hear the door slam. There you go, Colleen, creating more problems for yourself. She gets up, looks at the computer, and ultimately shuts it. The landline rings. Hello? Oh, hi, Connie. No, no, it's just me right now. T Tim just, he just, he just stepped out for a bit. I can have him call you back later. Oh yeah, I'm fine, just waiting for the kids to get home. <laughs> She's a senior this year, can you believe it? Yes, he's well. I think they're going to the finals this year, but we'll just have to see. Yes, I'll see you soon. Have a good night now. Bye. Colleen hangs up the phone and sighs. She moves back to the couch and turns the TV to a cooking show. She pulls out a journal or a notebook from an end table next to the couch, along with her glasses, and immediately starts copying the recipe. We hear the front door open and close. Tim, are you back already? Willow comes rushing into the room to hug Colleen. She's daddy's girl, but artsy. Mom! Hey, there's my favorite girl. Uh, it feels so good to be home. She looks at the hula lamp. Glad to see nothing has changed. Where's daddy? Oh, your father just stepped out for a bit. He'll be back soon. Where's Ricky? Ricky enters with many suitcases and bags. He's your run-of-the-mill college freshman basketball player. He's probably wearing gym shorts, even though it's getting cold out. Hello, a little help here? The drive back was absolutely dreadful. Seriously, it's the middle of fall. You'd think the idiot on the road wouldn't be affected until the snow hit. Oh, my babies. So happy to have you home. You both look so grown up more and more each day. We know, Mom. You remind us over your Facebook account every day. Well, I'm just using the platform that is given to me. You two only come home during the holiday or on a weekend like this. Your grandfather missed you, you know. Oh, Ma, come on. Grandpappy Flag barely even knew his own name the past few years, let alone ours. Ricky, you don't know what he was like. You weren't even here. Yeah? Well, I'm here now, Mom. Welcome home. He takes his suitcase and heads up the stairs. Colleen looks as if she may burst into tears. What did I just- Mom, it's okay. I just- He's been upset I, the whole drive. I just don't understand. This happens every time he comes home. Is it just me or is it just- His girlfriend is pregnant. <gasps> what? Cheyenne, she's pregnant or- at least she was, uh, I'm not sure. He mentioned it on the way up. She was supposed to come up with us, but over the past few days, I guess they had a falling out. What, was it Was it his? From what it sounded like, I don't think so. Oh, thank God. I'm too young to be a grandmother. <laughs> God forbid someone call you grandma. I, I'm still young. But you know, that still doesn't explain. Explain what, Mom? Oh, nothing, nothing, no. I'm just, I'm thankful it may not be his and I'm too young, he's too young. It's not good for his psyche. Ugh, just your worry wart mother. <laughs> I mean, if you can say that, he's pretty fucked up about it. Hey, language. Oh, sorry, I forgot I was home for a second. He pops down on the couch. Don't take it personal, mom, he just needs time. I just know he doesn't have the heart to tell you. It just seems like it's hurt him real bad, you know? Yeah, I know, honey. I know. I mean, it's not like people back in my day weren't having babies at that age, but it was just different. Just me and my age, as always. <laughs> well, that's no excuse. You okay, Mom? Oh, I'm fine, sweetie. Your grandfather just has my mind on mortality and whatnot. It's what comes with a funeral. I miss him too. Willow receives a cryptic message on her phone, much like the one her mother received. 
Oh, not this again. Mm. What is it, sweetie? Just these weird cryptic messages I keep getting asking me for money. Like I owe some stranger money. I don't even know these people. Mm. I've been getting those too. I think I need to get rid of my internet profiles. I just don't understand it. Then things like this happen and I have to ask your father how to take care of it. Though I often detest the way you kids were practically raised with these things. Should have raised you kids on art like I was. But it's a good thing you all know so much about it. Mom, you're showing your age again. What? Uh, 50. Yes, I'm 50. I've been around for half a century and I'm not going anywhere. Mortality keeping you humble, I see. Oh, how I miss that. <laughs> Oh, I missed you kids. All of your things are still in boxes in the attic. Hopefully you can find something if you need it. I was sure to be specifically labeling everything. A little obsessive, but good. Thank you. It'll make the move to New York easier in a few months. Oh, yes, the dreaded move. Uh, why do you have to go so far from your mother? Because unlike my mother, my art is going to be heard by all. My... Art is seen, not heard, young lady. Besides, I had that gallery showing. Yeah, a year ago at the local museum, and it had been several hundred years since your first. Was it even a real gallery? Well, no, but my art was on display for two months, and I even sold some pieces. Which ones? I sold the goddess painting and the boob statue. Someone actually bought the boob statue? Uh, some old pervert. <laughs> Understood. <laughs> <laughs> oh, how is the band? They're good. Gigs have been slow, though. Not much interest in our little old college town, which is weird. Mm, that is bizarre. I remember seeing the bands all the time when I was your age. I, I mean, most of them weren't very good, but you didn't particularly go to listen to music. <laughs> <laughs> okay. TMI, Mom. Sorry, just the old lady reminiscing. Ugh, I just miss having you kids around all the time. I'm just so happy to see you all. Your father's been moody for a while. I know I keep asking it, but is everything okay, Mom? Your mood isn't exactly stable. Oh, yes, yes. Your father just works a lot more now, so I'm just left to my own devices around the house, and since your grandfather passed away, I've had even less to do. Well, that gives you more time to focus on your art. Yes, it does. It's just been a little tough to find some inspiration, though. Too much death and bad juju. Well, I know about bad juju. College is full of it. Oh, I remember. Did I ever tell you about the roommate I had that ruined my Alvin and Chipmunks phone just because she used so much hair oil and it stained and ruined my phone? I don't think this is the same situation, Mom. No, you're probably right. Material things. Who needs them? <laughs> <laughs> I better take my things upstairs and check on Rick. I'm going to make some tea. Do you want some? Um, not right now. Maybe later. Love you, Ma. Love you too, sweetie. Willow exits up the stairs with her suitcase. Colleen sits on the couch. She looks at the record player. She gets up and selects Donna Summers on the radio. When the music starts, we hear the front door slam and Tim re-enters. The kids are home? Yep, Willow's content and Ricky's in a mood. Did you mention the- No, no. Tim shoots her a look. She coils. No, I didn't. Good. We don't need to talk about it. Did you smoke? You smell like a... No. Okay. Um, Connie called. She asked if you could help set up her new computer system. I'll give her a call when I have the time. That's what I told her. So what put Ricky in a mood? The usual, the drive, me, his girlfriend possibly being pregnant. What? Oh, uh, Willow said that the roads were full of idiots. And... No, 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 no. His girlfriend is what? Oh, Willow said he told her that his girlfriend is pregnant. Or was. I I, I don't know. She said it, would, it probably wasn't his. Well, that's what we're going to find out. Oh. Tim moves to the stairs. Richard! Tim, please don't. 
What? Get your ass down here right now. Tim, I really don't think we need to be mad about it. He's just... Just a young adult who's finally going to learn a lesson or two. No more of your coddling him. Rick enters from the stairs. Do we really need to be yelling? You're going to disturb the neighbors. Can we please just- Colleen, will you please just go to the kitchen? Tim, I- Now. Colleen runs to the kitchen. What did I do now? I haven't even been home for five minutes. Is Cheyenne pregnant? Well? Fucking okay, Willow. I'm waiting. I don't know. What? Dad, I don't know. A bunch of shit hit the fan before I left. We broke up. She said she was pregnant. I got kicked off the basketball team. You what? Fuck. You got kicked off the team. Ricky, that's how we're paying for the majority of your tuition. How do you expect to stay in college without those scholarships coming in? That's the thing. I'm not staying. I dropped out. You what? I dropped out. Dad, I'm finished. Done. It's not for me. I can't take the stress. And what do you intend to do? Sit around here and be a bum the rest of your life? That is absolutely not happening. I don't know, Dad. You don't seem to know a goddamn thing. Maybe it's a good thing you're not in school anymore. Wouldn't have been able to keep up anyway. Dad, I... Jesus, Ricky. It'd be nice if you could fucking think about someone other than yourself for once in your fucking life. Think of your father having to slave away over 40 hours a week to keep both you and your fucking sister in school while your mother sits at home and wastes her life on a dream that faded a long time ago. Well, maybe I got dreams too, Dad. Maybe I thought it was basketball, but that's always because you were shoving it down my throat. Same with Boy Scouts, same with baseball, same with pretty much everything I ever did. I don't know what you want from me, Dad. I'm sorry. I don't fit into your tiny reality box that doesn't go beyond this fucking suburbia life you've cooked up. I did not raise a fucking bum. Jesus Christ. Come and talk to me when you figured out how you actually want to live and function like a human being. Tim storms up the stairs and slams the door. Ricky collapses on the couch and bursts into tears. Colleen peeks her head in with two cups of cocoa, one with extra marshmallows. She wipes some tears. She obviously heard what Tim said. She approaches the couch with caution. The record is still spinning. Hey, here's my special little man. She sits down next to him. You can get rid of your father, but you can't scare me off. I live with him and I gave birth to you, remember? Yes, mom, you remind me every time I come home. She hands him the cocoa. He hesitates, but he takes it. Extra marshmallows. You never do forget. Now, oh, I'm your mother. Of course I don't. Now, what's going on, sweetie? You wouldn't understand, Mom. Sweetie, again, I'm your mother. It's not my job to understand. It's my job to listen, adapt, to help my children. You sound like a pamphlet from the high school guidance counselor. <laughs> I did used to read those, you know, while I was waiting in the lobby to pick you kids up. <laughs> Are you doing drugs? Jesus, Mom, no. Then what is it? I heard everything. The neighbors heard everything. You and your father aren't exactly quiet vicarers. Is Cheyenne really pregnant? Yeah. She is. Is it yours? No. At least, I don't think so. She was kind of awful about the whole situation. She just really wanted to rub it in that it wasn't mine, but I was going to have to man up and take care of her and her condition. You two were always so happy. She really knew how to appear that way. She was a controlling bitch. Language. Sorry, I forget that I'm home sometimes. Ah, nice try, but you can't use the same excuse as your sister. Damn it. Well, there's plenty of girls out there, honey. Yeah. 
I guess I'm, I think I'm just done dating for a while. Maybe you just need a different type. What? Of girl, just, just a different type of girl. Now, what happened with the basketball team? I uh, didn't get kicked off. I quit. Why, sweetie, you loved basketball ever since you could practically walk. That's not true and you know it. Yeah, you're right, I do. Just like how you always used to get out of going to camping with the scouts. Well, those fellow scouts weren't exactly the nicest guys. But even worse than that, Mom, the, the basketball team, they, they made me do things, Mom. Not the coaches, they were great. Well, sometimes. But the team made all the freshmen do these horrible things. And I tried to blend in, but once they found out that I was a freshman, they were just relentless. And they made us drink all these weird things and I passed out and woke up in someone's room with a bunch of others and we were all tied up and they were spraying us with a hose and mom, it was horrible. It was torture up until I just, I just left and just had to get out and I saw no other way. Jesus, honey. He pulls him close, he's crying. The coaches didn't do anything? I tried, Mom. They told me, stick it out. It's tradition. Or do you want this or not? Someone is going to get a nasty anonymous phone call. I wouldn't waste your breath, Mom. You know what this is, don't you? It's all that toxic masculinity. Hmm. I knew I raised you right. So, when did you leave? around the first or second of November. I've just been couch surfing till I came home with Willow. Sweetie, you could have called me. I was too scared of dad to call. I know that feeling. So what's the plan? I don't know. I was thinking about just getting a van and a dog, maybe hit the road for a while until I figure it out. I had a friend that did that once. And were they happy? They got to see the world? Mm, no. He had a heart attack and died two weeks into the drive and the dog ate his corpse. So. Okay. Uh, maybe I could do without the dog. Maybe a cat. Ugh, no. Cats are assholes. <laughs> Language. I am your mother. I'll say what I want. Ouch, my young boy ears. Oh, please. You're an adult, but you know your mother is always happy to have you home. I know. I love you, Mom. I just wish Dad felt the same. I love you too, sweetie. I'm sure he does, just tough dad love, like in the old movies. My only hope now is that your sister will be the mega successful one. God knows his family needs at least one. <laughs> Willow enters unseen on the stairs. And who knows, maybe some time off is just the thing that you need. I just gotta figure this shit out. Yeah, and you will, sweetie. Ricky? What are you doing? Come to tell more of my secrets? Ricky, I'm sorry, but you really upset mom and I had to give some reasoning. You knew they were probably going to find out sooner or later. Yeah, and dad was going to get steamed like a fucking ham no matter what. Language. Sorry. I'm going to need to start a swear jar. Please don't. I'll go broke. You mean I'll go broke with the money that I give you. Okay, fair point. She turns to Ricky. I'm sorry. Am I forgiven? I guess so. Hey, hug. Oh, my babies, you two have always been able to fix your own battles. She gets up to flip the record. We had to. You and dad never wanted to get in the middle of it. Well, would you want to get in the way of a freight train going 200 miles per hour? Ricky goes to answer. Don't answer that. Colleen then spots the picture albums on the bookshelf. 
She pulls three of them out and brings them to the couch. Whoa, kids! While I have you both held captive in the house, you can help me find some picture of the funeral board. <laughs> Come on, it'll be fun. She plops a book on each kid's laps and she sits and opens hers. The kids start flipping through as well. Oh, look, Willow, here's one of you and Grandpa Flag on the carousel at the pier. Mom, did you literally take a picture a day for the first five to 10 years of our lives? No, I had to have something around before you kids left my nest forever. Oh, Mom, look at this one. It's you, me, Dad, Grandpa Flag, and Granny stuff the day before Ricky was born. Oh my God, I look like a whale. Oh, please. You're too vain for your own good sometimes. Oh, I have to be. After all, I'm... 50! Mom, we, we get it. it. That's right. You had to be right before Granny stuff left for her first charity mission. Is this one me and Dad? Uh, no, I think that's your sister. Ooh, the picture is so fuzzy. Good old disposable Kodaks. How I wish you kids were home all the time again. I only know what's happening nowadays with that computer and a phone I'm too incompetent to use. Well, you didn't expect us to stay around forever, did you? Oh, sweetie. No mother truly wants their children to leave home. Only the fathers want that. Ain't that the truth? That's why I did these little statuettes that are on the table here. It's all my favorite memories of you kids. I can see them and be reminded of you kids every day. Oh, so that's what these little tchotchkes are. Is this one of the times we've blamed the dog for breaking the screen door? Stop, I miss Squirty so much. Yes, and that's my favorite. Most of all, I just miss being able to sit around the dining room table as a family and just hear about your day at school and what you were both excited to be learning and creating. It was always such a nice time. Nowadays, it's a miracle I can even get your father to take me out for a nice sit down meal. Most nights are just spent cooking by and for myself. Well, why can't we do it tonight? Oh, no, oh, sweetie, I wanted to, but I have to go see what's in the pantry. I, I don't have time to grocery shop this week. You kids keep pulling photos. I'll take a look, okay? Colleen gets up and exits into the kitchen. The kids continue to go through their fo photos and laugh. Willow's phone rings. Hello? Sid, what's up? Uh-huh, yeah. Shut up! When? Oh, no. No, no, it should be fine. Um, give them a yes? <laughs> well, I don't know. I'm at home for my grandfather's funeral and, oh, oh, it's, it's okay. Thanks. I mean, yeah. Um, I really want to be there, but, uh, I know. I'll call you back, okay? Thanks, Sid. Love ya. Bye. Willow hangs up and returns back to the couch. She lets out a sigh. What's wrong? My band just got asked to play this huge concert hall in New York. Okay, that's awesome. When is it? I'd have to leave Saturday morning. And that's the day of the funeral. Well, what are you gonna do? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I just, fuck. I get that. The record ends and Ricky gets up and puts on Queen's The Works. I just don't wanna have to make this choice right now. I really wanna be here for mom, you know? Oh, finally something I can listen to. Whatever do you mean? You don't like disco? He does a little disco dance. I'd rather not have to listen to Donna Summer if I don't have to. Mom kind of ruined that for me, playing it all the time when we were growing up. His grooves change to match the new music. I don't know. I guess that's kind of forced me to like it. Yeah, I guess so. So, what actually happened with Cheyenne, Rick? What do you mean? Come on, Ricky. I'm your sister. Is she actually pregnant? Willow. Ricky, I only told this stuff to mom because I thought it would get you to come clean about what's actually going on. 
You hardly spoke the whole way here. And even when you told me what had happened, you didn't seem very sincere. Ricky starts to lose his front and break down. Willow, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I, I just can't. I... It's, okay. it's okay, Ricky. But please just tell me, is Cheyenne actually pregnant? Ricky sits down on the couch and Willow joins him. No, she's not. I made it up, but I didn't make up the breakup. She was abusive and controlling. Like if we ever had sex, she basically always forced me into it. And I- Ricky, I, Ricky, why didn't you just tell us that? Why did you go through all this yelling and screaming? Did you just not want them to know that you were single again or something? I mean, I've been single forever and- I didn't tell them cause I'm gay. Wait, what? I'm gay. And I didn't tell mom and dad because you know how dad's always been and, and talked about, you, you know, like being a man and shit like that. Ricky, being gay doesn't make you any less of a man. I know, I think. You know what high school was like for me. I was puny, shoved in lockers just for that. And the insults? I thought college was gonna be different, but then all the hazing started and all those feelings of being smaller than everyone came flooding back and I felt like I was that scared little kid shoved in a smelly gym locker, just screaming. I made a promise to myself that I was never gonna feel like that again. Basketball helped with that somewhat, but it was just that giving into what dad wanted didn't feel right. And I'm, I'm just so scared. Willow hugs her brother. You don't need to be Rick. You got me. And your big sister will never let anything happen to you, okay? Besides, I'm sure if you've thought about it and known it for a while now, I'm sure they know as well. You think? I'm almost sure of it. The same thing happened with Sid and his family. Only his mom found a box of porn in his room and that just made family gatherings awkward until he came out. Ricky looks fear-ridden. Are you okay? Yeah, I just hope mom and dad haven't been in my room lately. <laughs> oh my God, don't tell me. I have to go to my room. <laughs> Willow continues laughing as Ricky runs up the stairs and Colleen comes back into the room. What's so funny? <laughs> nothing, mom, nothing at all. It certainly doesn't sound like nothing. It's an inside joke, mom, between me and Rick. Uh, won't let me inside your joke. <laughs> Sorry, Mom. No can do. Did you find anything for dinner? Are you sick of Top Ramen? I'm a college student, Mom. Of course I am. I froze. I'm so sorry. Are you guys still- Okay, just say, then we are, just like give it a second and then just say, then we are fresh out of everything again because it froze up. Okay. Hmm. Should I go now? Can everyone hear me? I can hear you. Yes. I can't really see anyone. Oh. Okay. Um. Uh, then we are fresh out of everything. My mind has just been too occupied with the funeral and everything to grocery shop. It's okay, Mom. Rick and I can run out to the grocery store or something. Oh, but you kids just got home. Maybe I can ask your father. A door closes from upstairs and Tim enters. Speak of the devil. Willow. Honey, do you think you could run to the grocery store for me? Hi, sweetie. Happy you're home. Uh, I can't call in. I just got called into the office. What this late? That's crazy. Just some routine, putting out the fire stuff. I shouldn't be long. Oh, well, what about dinner? I'm sure you'll figure something out. He leaves. We hear the door close, the car start, and it pulls away. What's up his ass? Language, please. Sorry. He's just a lot edgier than when I last saw him. Well, he's been having a lot of hard times at work right now. Yeah, 
That must be it. Ricky enters. What's for dinner? I'm starved. Well, top ramen or a trip to the grocery store. See, I was feeling a good old pizza from Aunt Rosie's. Oh, now there's an idea I can get behind. You kids and your pizza. Okay, I guess I'm outnumbered on this. So what the hell, I was up two pounds this morning anyway. <laughs> That's my mom. What do you kids want? Pineapple. Oh. Good grief, I'll make the call. Colleen exits. Ricky goes to change the record once again on the turntable when he receives a cryptic message on his phone. Huh? What's up? Just got a super fucked up text from another unknown number, but it's about dad. What? Let me see. I need to go get Tim. He has money for me. How can I contact? I need help. He loves me? I'm coming to warn. Someone bad coming, I have to help. What the fuck is coming where and who? What is this? I don't know, but I have a feeling it's not just some scammer anymore. Willow then receives the same text. Oh my God, I just got it too. What do we do? Do we tell mom? I'm really not into someone trying to kill me tonight. <laughs> Why does your mind always automatically assume the worst. Because pessimism is far more powerful than optimism. The laptop then gets many, many consecutive notifications as Ricky and Willow also receive more. Why is this happening? What if that stuff about dad is true? What do we tell mom? What are we supposed to tell her? Oh, by the way, mom, who's this possible lady who might be hooking up with our father? Okay, when you say it like that, you sound crazy. Well, how else is it supposed to sound? All of a sudden, the notifications stop. Colleen walks into the room. She's looking at her phone as if she'd fall over at any second. Um? Mom, what's... What's going on? Um... Well, your father has a lot of explaining to do. Are you okay, Mom? It's just scammers, right? That's always what he told me. I, I just, I don't understand. Willow, what is this? I'm, I, 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 I can't, I can't even speak. I. Colleen dials her cell phone and holds it to her ear when there is an aggressive knock at the door. The doorbell rings repeatedly. Everyone freezes in terror. Should we? Are you fucking stupid, Mom? What do we do? Kids, go upstairs. Mom, are you? Go. The kids run up to the top of the stairs. There are a few more knocks at the door. Colleen doesn't move. Then she hesitates and for some reason decides to go with. It's open. A beat. And then we hear the door fly open and Babe comes running in babbling and frantic. Colleen screams and runs. And the kids run back down the stairs also screaming to try and help their mother. Colleen grabs the hula lamp to defend herself. Wait. Colleen freezes with the hula lamp high above her head as Babe seems to freeze and be unable to form words. She shakes in fear, but she is finally able to say, I sent some messages. I, how? How? How did you find us? How do you know who we are? Babe shakes her head. She understands, but seemingly can't respond. Colleen lowers the lamp and sets it back down. Willow springs into action, cautiously approaching Babe to show her no ill intention. She seems to now understand this is a place of safety. Are you here because of our dad? Tim? Colleen lets out a breath and turns and sits in one of the armchairs. Do you speak any English? Babe stops for a second. She musters some energy. No, I, I, it's difficult. But you can understand us. Babe nods and Willow motions her to sit down on the couch. She does so. She tries to form words to speak. Don't force yourself. I'm sure you're exhausted. Ricky, will you bring in some water, please? Yeah. Yeah. Ricky exits into the kitchen. Colleen is shaking. 
You're safe now. Babe breathes and seems to settle. Willow notices her mom. Mom, are you okay? I don't, I don't think so. What's going on? How am I supposed to know? Dad's not going to respond, so he's practically missing. You're zoning out, and there's a strange woman who is close to catatonic sitting in our living room. There's no need to shout. I'm not shouting, Mom. I'm just kind of stressed and freaked the fuck out. Ricky re-enters with the water, one for Babe, one for Colleen. He hands Babe the water with a reaffirming head nod. She accepts. He approaches Colleen, but Willow grabs the glass. Gimme. She chugs the water and hands him back the glass. Thanks. No problem. Ricky, Ricky exits again with the empty glass. What's your name? Babe shakes her head. She is still struggling to speak. Do we, do you have anything we could call you? Babe nods. Babe. 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 Babe nods. Willow, please stop with the questions. This poor girl is obviously exhausted and distraught. I know, Mom. This whole thing is just way too freaky for me to handle. Ricky returns with two glasses of water. Here's two more glasses of water. Sorry, I couldn't find any Xanax in the fridge. Okay, damn, tough crowd. If she'd like to lie down, we can put her in the guest room. Willow turns to her. Babe nods and agrees. Ricky, will you take her, please? Ricky nods and gently guides Babe up the stairs. When they finally are gone from sight. Mom. Colleen snaps back as if she were in a trance. What is going on? Willow, don't you think if I knew, I would have answered that question already? Okay, damn, it was just a question. Sorry, honey, I... I'm just, I'm so confused and I just can't help but feel like this is somehow my fault. Your fault? How? It's not your fault, it's dad's. Just don't understand. Colleen is beginning to start crying. Well, I'm assuming at this point, but dad's mistress somehow stalked us to the point of finding out where we live and is now in our guest room. <laughs> if she's a mistress, then it, then no. it. Mom! Dad cheating on you has nothing to do with you. That shit is 100% on him. Right, I just, I, she said she wants to help, but do what? Tear my marriage apart? What did she think she would accomplish? I don't know, Mom. Maybe she found out about us and just panicked. We're all in the dark, Mom, and Dad basically missing right now isn't exactly giving him a clean slate. Maybe try calling the office. I'll give it a shot. Colleen exits into the kitchen. Ricky re-enters from the stairs. I think she's gonna try to sleep. How's mom? I think she's calmed down. Colleen lets out a blood-curdling scream. Doesn't sound like it. Colleen runs back into the living room and drops to the floor. Kate, get down. There's men poking around outside and, and they have guns. I saw them through the window. Mom, what? Just get down. The kids hit the floor just in time as the goons open fire on the house. Bullet holes blow through the walls. The bookcase, glass shatters, all hell breaks loose. A lull hits. The family starts to rise again to their feet when a goon comes crashing through the window, guns and ammo in hand. The family try to run up the stairs as Andre enters, a lit cigarette in his mouth. He is huge and intimidating. He wears sunglasses and he has Babe by the hair. More goons enter blocking all entrances to the living room. Where is he? Where's who? You know goddamn well. Where's Tim Stuff? He's not home. Who are you? What is the meaning of this? I'll be asking the questions from here on, bitch. Got get him, fellas. The goons grab Willow, Ricky, and Colleen. They force them to their knees in the center of the room. Don't you fucking hurt my kids, you monsters! Keep them quiet. Ricky turns to Colleen. I think this is what she meant by trying to help us. Andre hears this. He snaps. Two goons grab Ricky and pin him into the armchair. Andre Do you not hear what I fucking said? I said keep your fucking mouth shut. No, please. Oh, but we just please, want Ricky, please don't on. hurt him. Andre pulls the cigarette out of his mouth and presses it into Ricky's arm. Ricky lets out a blood-curdling yell. Andre snaps again, and the goons release Ricky, who lays in the chair, searing with pain. Your scumbag husband 
is sleeping with my wife. Where is he? Not going to talk, huh? Well, maybe your daughter will tell me. Andre snaps Mom, again. fucking tell him. Mom. Wait. He, t- he told me he went, he went to his office. I'm guessing he'll be home any minute. <laughs> That's more like it. A little cooperation isn't hard now, is it? He turns to the goons. I want one of you stalked at each entrance. The goons drop Willow and exit. Willow helps Ricky up to the couch. Andre retrieves Babe from the landing on the stairs and plops her into one of the armchairs. Who are you? Someone who people know not to fuck with. As I'm sure your scumbag husband will come to find out. You son of a bitch! Ricky charges at Andre, and Andre knocks him down with one blow. Colleen screams. You kid. I think he gets the picture night now. Willow rushes to him, picks him up, and puts him back on the couch. He's basically unconscious. Stay on the fucking couch. <clears throat> anyway, I'm sure my babe has already given you a clear warning, or well, try to anyway. She doesn't speak good English. Keeps her quiet generally. That is until she gets her sneaky little hands on my cell phone. Which explains- How I found you very observant. She never was smart enough to figure out how to turn off the location device. But I had been planning to come here for weeks. You see, your husband isn't exactly the tidiest person on the planet. He likes to lose things. These things including a watch, a couple thousand dollars, a business card here and there with ways that they would be able to contact him when he came to Venezuela. I'm sure he told you he was going away on a business. Am I right? Granny stuffs the state. What? Mm, So I'm right. Stealing my lovely little woman away for hours. Sometimes she'd be gone for a few days. Lavish hotels, beach getaways. But she always came home and just claimed she was hiding from me or tried to escape and couldn't get away. So she had a come back to me, begging on her hands and knees. I took mercy until I found these little gifts that I knew I would stop until nothing until I found this person who's determined to take away from me what was rightfully mine. Get the picture? So her finally getting away from you just gave you a reason to finally do what you've been wanting to do all along? <laughs> Smart girl. My little vixen led me right to you. All I had to do was trace and follow her footsteps until it led me here. And I thought I was from the middle of nowhere. Venezuela seems like paradise or something. Mom. Paradise compared to here. At least there it's warm. Mom, are you all right? Colleen doesn't speak. She doesn't know where she is. She doesn't know what to think. Her life seems like a lie. Tough day, huh? Gee, you think? I'd wash it if I were you. I'll take the note after you stop this insanity and leave my family alone. Listen here, you fucking bitch! You're gonna keep your mouth shut. I'm here for one thing and one thing only. Your slut fucking father. I know you're probably daddy's little girl. Always got what you wanted, huh? Had a had an art show in high school. Got the car she always wanted at 16, huh? You wanna know what I got when I turned 16? I inherited a drug kingdom because my coke-addicted father was drowned by his power-hungry mistress in a bathtub. I give you the and right will to the big girl act. Just please, honey, sit down and shut up. I love you, but for once in your life, can you take your fist out of the air and admit defeat? Spoken like a true fucking housewife. Now wait a damn minute. Willow goes to get up. Andre presses his shotgun right into her chest. Mmm. Better do what mommy says, princess. She retreats. We hear a car door slam in the driveway. Everyone freezes. Not a word. Willow sits on the couch, and Andre grabs Bra- Babe and ducks onto the stair landing out of sight. Colleen has dissociated. Ricky is not in good shape. Willow sits as if she is alone in silent suspense. We hear the front door open. Colleen? Kids? I'm back. What's for dinner? Um. Willow, shh. Where is everyone? Tim enters. Tim enters the living room. What happened here? Colleen? Willow? Dad, I, we just, 
She can't even form a sentence. Andre steps forward. Welcome home, Tim. Tim spots Babe on the landing and tries to escape, but the goons cut off each exit. He then locks eyes with Andre, who charges him, grabs him, and drags him right in front of Colleen. She looks at him. Honey? Tim, what the fuck is going on? Blackout. End of Act One.
Act two. When the curtain comes up, back up, we find the living room in shambles. It's only been an hour or two since Andre arrived. The furniture is shot up. The statuettes of the kids are smashed to pieces, all except the dog and screen door one. The liquor bottles and glasses from the bar are all smashed or basically empty from the goons and Andre indulging themselves. The bookshelf is torn apart. Pages from books litter the stage. A few records are sticking out from the wall where they have been thrown as frisbees. The coffee table is gone and has been replaced by four chairs. Tied in these chairs are Colleen, basically catatonic at this point, Willow and Ricky, who's passed out and drooling some blood. He's been beat up pretty bad. The empty chair is Tim's, who's upstairs being tortured by Andre. Babe cowers in the corner by the bookshelf, also bloody, having been beaten up and abused by Andre. Some goons stand watch. When their backs are turned, Willow tries to wriggle free. Of course, all of this had to happen this weekend. It's not like I can have one fucking normal weekend when it comes to this family. Mom, mom, can you hear me? <sighs> okay, you're about as useless as Ricky right now. Always gotta try and do the big man routine just because he's, Never mind. I'm talking to myself and this is helping no one and only deterring my sanity even further. A goon notices Willow struggling. Consigue más cuadra. Ella está tratando escapa. Retrocede, imbécil. No jodas conmigo. The goons, shocked at this development, back off. Habla español? You speak Spanish. Remember, Mom? Granny was a Spanish teacher. It's also not like I've taken Spanish since like fourth grade and I have a minor in it. So yeah, of course I speak Spanish. Just because dad never stuck with it and no one else in this family seems to care about being bilingual doesn't mean I didn't take an interest in language. Maybe if you and dad actually talked to us and acted interested, you'd remember stuff like this. Colleen is hurt by this. Does she not take interest in her kids? Hablas inglés? No. Well, the relief is they don't speak English, so we can speak freely and they can't understand us. She notices Colleen in her own world. Mom, come back to Earth, please. We need to figure out how to get out of this. You really feel like I don't pay attention to you? Oh my God, Mom, this is not the time for this, but yes, I sometimes feel that you and Dad only really hear what you want to hear and you don't really listen to me or Rick for that matter. But again, can't really blame you living in the bubble that is this place. But right now, we need to figure out how to get out of here. Dila Andre, que la ella habla español. Oh shit. Oh sweetie, I am so sorry. Colleen starts to break down as a goon enters upstairs. Jesus, mom, please pull yourself together. I don't know how long we got before Andre bounced his way back down here and- As que se calle. Por que no te callas y busca butral otro chupapoyos? The goon looks at her, then exits up the stairs. Finally, the trio is alone. Oh, thank you. Jesus. Okay, mom. I need you to get a grip on yourself. Yes. The world is falling apart right now, but I need you to be strong so we can get out of this. Scream from Tim upstairs. Colleen continues crying. Oh, Lord, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change. I just wanted us all to be a happy family again, but your grandfather passed, and now this! Willow, how did everything go so wrong? Life was so simple. You kids were living your lives. You were making art. I don't know what happened. Your father drifted, and I saw all of it, but I ignored it. I've been a bad wife and a terrible mother, and you kids are going to continue to grow up and resent me for the rest of your life. <laughs> Mom, we have to make it out of here alive first for any of this to happen. So if you want me to resent you, then get a fucking grip and help me untie this chair. What's the point? We're doomed anyway. There's no reason to fight anymore. Aline tries to dissociate further. <laughs> okay, no getting through to you. She glances to Ricky. And he's still out cold. Oh, what a gang of ragtag characters I see before me. Willow's cell phone rings on the side table. Shit. She tries to hop her chair over to the table, only tipping it over and landing on the floor, still trapped. Fuck. She spots Babe. She's stirring in pain. 
Hey, Psst. babe, could you please help me? Please, I'm gonna go try and get help. Babe turns to face her. Help, help, I'm going to get help. Babe struggles to get up, but she's able to muster enough strength to be able to crawl over to Willow and helps her get her up upright. She begins to feverishly untie the knots when Andre unknowingly comes down the stairs and spots Babe. She's really struggling with the rope. Willow gives her words of encouragement best as she can until Andre grabs her and throws her over his shoulder. Ha <laughs> ha, you're coming with me, my little minx. Babe screams as Andre takes her upstairs. The door slams. Son of a bitch. She jumps in her chair, slamming it hard. The slamming stirs Rick's, Ricky, and he starts breathing really hard. No. No, please, no. No, stop. Ricky. Get, get off, get off me. No, no. Ricky, Ricky, calm down. What's going on? Willow, what, what, what's going on? I, I think he's having a panic attack or a PTSD episode or something. Oh, God. Mom. That's the reason he left Willow, Rick, Ricky, honey. It's, it's mom. Left what? Ricky is totally freaking out like he's trapped in a dream. He continues screaming. Not important right now, sweetie. It's okay. I need you to wake up. It's not real. You're safe. Well, mostly. <laughs> the heavy breathing and screaming continue. Mom, we have to try something else. Well, we have no hands, Willow. So what would you like me to do? Oh, shit. Just talk to him. If we keep at this, he's bound to hear us eventually or just try to give his leg a good kick. Willow, without missing a beat, slams her foot into Ricky's leg. And this jolts him awake, screaming until he realizes where he is, and Colleen and Willow both look at him. You guys get here. We're at home, Ricky. I could have swore I was. You're not there, sweetie. Need a recap? No, I, I remember. Is dad still? Yeah, he is. They took babe, too. Shit. We need a new plan. Ricky wriggles his arm. I have one. Well. He pops one arm free from the ropes. Oh my god. Shh. Don't draw them down here. After some more wriggling, the ropes fall free and Ricky is free to get up. Now what? Untie us. He starts to do so, but a noise is heard upstairs. No time. Ricky, you have to get out of here and get to the police. Go out the bathroom window. They won't hear the door. Mom? Just do it, sweetie. We'll be okay. Well? I gotta tell you something. Now? I think it can wait, Ricky. No, I gotta do it now. Just in case. We'll Ricky. spit it out, sweetie. Mom, I'm gay. Well, that's great, sweetie. Now get out of here and get to the police. Wait, do you not care? Of course I care, sweetie, but it doesn't matter if that's who you are. I'm your mother and I'll always love you. I just want you safe and happy. I love you, mom. Besides, sweetie, your father and I found the porn box this morning, so we already knew. <laughs> I told ya. Now, put those long legs to work and get us out of here. Ricky nods and exits. It's quiet for a moment. You really found the porn? Yes, I tripped over it before you kids got home and it spilled out onto the floor. <laughs> oh my God. I think we're gonna be okay, mom. Yeah. As long as Ricky can find the police station. That is true. I don't even know where that is. <sighs> I don't either. More noise and screams are heard from upstairs. We're fucked. This will make for an interesting story one day. Oh, if we make it out alive. Ah, so who's being negative now? Touche, mom. <laughs> a knock at the front door. What was that? There's another knock. It isn't Connie, is it? She's the only one who would come over at this time. Pizza delivery. Oh no. Oh no. Maybe if we ignore them, they'll just go away. Pizza deliverer enters from the dining room, not paying attention. Your front door was open. I don't know if you know this or not. Oh. 
what age are we living in where a pizza delivery person just walks into somebody's home? Oh, it's 2016. And clearly since the election, the country's already lost even more decency. What? Oh, sweetie, your mother has never high-fived anyone in her life, but I would so give you one right now. Look, I'm just here to drop off the pizza. Well, you'd be a lot more help if you just untied us. What? Now! The pizza deliverer sets the pizza on the desk, and though confused, starts to help. We then hear a door slam, open, and a scream as we see Tim flung down the stairs. His body stops on the landing as Andre comes down the stairs, picks him up by the shirt, and drags him to the center of the room, where he is thrown down in front of Colleen, Willow, and the deliverer. The deliverer stops cold in their tracks. Un intruso? Tim! Andre shoots the pizza deliverer. The girls scream. <laughs> He's not going anywhere anytime soon. <laughs> Same goes for Tim. Goons drag Babe down the stairs. She's screaming and kicking. Andre grabs her and ties her up in Ricky's vacant chair. They don't seem to notice that he's gone. The goons dispose of the pizza deliverer behind the bar. Andre spots Willow. He menaces his way over to her, puts one leg on her chair and lights a cigarette. He blows the first puff in her face. Un pejito, mi hito, que hablas espanol? She spits in his face. He snaps, the goons grab her and drag her upstairs. She screams the entire way. Colleen is left with an unconscious Tim and Babe cowering and crying in the chair. Tim? Shit. It's quiet. Dead quiet for a while. We hear some rumbles and screams from upstairs. Then she notices Babe. It's going to be okay. Babe? She sniffles and looks at her. Her breathing calms throughout the entire following dialogue. I know things are looking bleak right now, but I think what we need most right now is some happy memories. Christ, you might have no idea what I'm saying, but something tells me you do. Either way, a listener may be nice. I've had a lot of happy moments in my life. I know a lot of people don't say that anymore, but I never really had a lot of complaints. I didn't have to really work a real job, and I was able to focus on my art and the kids. Oh, the kids. Night's been so crazy, I'd almost forgotten all about all this. I wasn't supposed to be able to have kids, you know. The doctor... Uh, <laughs> the doctors told me in my 20s that my ovaries were defective or, or something. I cried for days. <laughs> it was on my mind every time I went on a date. What if this person is the one for me? What if he wants babies? How do I tell them that that can't happen? So you can imagine my anxiety when I went through when I met Tim. It was love at first sight. <laughs> one thing led to another and well, you know, <laughs> a few months went by and I started getting really sick and no one could tell what it was. And a few days after throwing up profusely, I found out I was pregnant. And I cried. I couldn't even speak. <laughs> the doctors were baffled and as were all of us, but it happened. Twice even when Willow and Ricky were born, everything just made sense. I was born to be a mother. This sits a while, but something about the last sentence resonates and puts things into perspective with Babe. She swallows hard, takes a deep breath, and speaks. I think I was born to be a mother, too. I always wanted to be one anyway. But like how you became one, not how I've been forced to try to become one. I never had this love that you speak of. Everything since I was very young was by force. Colleen is amazed by this revelation. She doesn't know what to say. No family, no, no anything? You must understand that I was stolen from my family at a very young age. So young that I can hardly remember my family now. 
I remember my mother's face every so often. But when I close my eyes, it's often hard to only see the faces of people I was beat and abused by. Though those faces were always just shapes. It was always so, so dark and cold. I spent months chained up and afraid of these men. And but one day a lady came to me and told me someone had come to save me. I felt happy. However, as I soon learned, this was not the case. I had been sold to the highest bidder in an auction and I was being shipped out to him. I was accompanied by the same lady the whole way. She never spoke to me, but she always answered for me wherever we went. The trip was long and hot and I had no idea where I was being taken. When I arrived, the air smelled like oil and it was as, as if my clothes were sticking to my body. I was put in a black car with dark windows and was driven for what felt like hours. When I arrived, I was rushed into a bedroom where some woman cleaned me and I was taken down to a lovely beach. Andre was there waiting for me. He said I was his wife now. I didn't even understand I was so young. It wasn't until I was older I started to understand that Andre was the one who bought me so he could have total control over every aspect of his life. Too much control. That's not love. And it's funny, for the longest time, that's what I thought love was. There were many times Andre made it appear like he really did love me and maybe some part of him does. Not exactly easy to tell. I was always paraded around like, trophy out in the open. He had the people fooled. Sometimes he even had me fooled. But you had to know he didn't actually love you. I guess a part of me did. But other parts of me wanted to believe it. But it started to feel very wrong. And escape from him seemed impossible? I hadn't thought about the option of running away until only a few years ago. That was when Andre began to get very violent and angry. It was probably due to me realizing how life should be led. But no, and I tried many, many times. I was always caught. He had spies everywhere. And whenever I was brought back, he would beat me and, and he would force himself on me. I've been pregnant nine times. Nine times? Did you? I never carried a baby to birth. I always found a way to get rid of it. I don't want to be the reason continued evil is brought upon the world. So why are you only speaking now? I had assumed you were mute. I thought you couldn't. I feel like I am essentially mute. Trauma has a lot to do with it, I think. My brain shuts down and nothing really comes out. I learned English by listening, really. It wasn't easy. Andre spoke mostly Spanish, but his colleagues preferred English. Babe, I'm so, so sorry. Nothing to be done now. It is how you say the cards I was dealt. But that doesn't mean it has to stay the way it can. People like Andre are the masters of the cards. They deal them. We suffer the consequences. But that doesn't mean we can't fight back. People don't always win a fight against Andre. Well, it doesn't mean we can't try. He's far from home now. No. Well, my fault he's here now. I should have been more careful. Like Tim? I am sorry about Tim. I guess it was the same with you. Things made sense. I actually felt true happiness. There's nothing to be ashamed of. I'm sorry, this isn't your fault. However, it's clear, it clears a lot of things up. I'm sure you were just as confused as I was. Tim often ignored my messages until I found your Facebook profiles. I thought I could reach someone, anyone. How? How did you two even come in contact? 
found Tim on one of my escape attempts. I ran into him in a street market and I got him to take me somewhere to evade Andre's lookouts. And in Venezuela, romance was inevitable. I guess so. Things just happened. He made me feel wanted. Yeah. He was always good at that. Tim stirs a bit. Oh my God, Tim. Tim, can you hear me? Tim, please get up. They, they have Willow. Pauline? Yes, Tim, it's me. You have to get up. Get us out of here. Tim stirs some more and he tries to get up. We hear a snap and he lets out a yell and collapses. His leg is broken. Fuck. Tim? Tim? What's wrong? Did you not hear the snap? My fucking leg is broken. Tim, they have Willow. You have to untie us and get us out of here. What's the point? The point is our daughter is upstairs and we are down here and powerless to help her. Help us. Tim huffs and crawls over to Colleen's chair where he's able to undo the knots. Once she is up, Colleen rushes over to Babe to untie her as well. The women then pick up Tim and put him on the couch. Babe, run into the bathroom and fetch me the first aid kit. Then in my studio by the kitchen, there should be some thick wooden dowels. Babe nods and exits under the stairs. Colleen grabs some tissues and starts to blot Tim's face. He winces. I thought you were dead. I'd rather be. Don't say that. You know what we've been through all these years of marriage. Two beautiful children and you'd give up just like that? What are you going on about? I'm talking about us, Tim. Why wouldn't you just tell me you were unhappy? I... Colleen, is now really the time for this? When is the time, Tim? For so many years, you cast me aside. I'm almost every aspect of our marriage. For once, I would just like a shred of decency and understanding from my perspective. Decency? Have I given you nothing but decency over the years? Nothing but understanding, and this is the thanks I get? He whacks his leg and yelps. Then a crash and a scream from Willow from upstairs. Tim. They're hurting our daughter. Babe returns with the materials. Thank you, babe. Could you just give us a moment? She nods and goes into the dining room. Colleen starts to bandage his leg. I never wanted to cheat on you. You have to believe me, that was never my first intention. My marriage is falling apart, let me cheat on my wife. This all began because you had to go and get all involved in shit that was none of your business. I heard you out when you said you had to move into your parents' house. I heard you out the first time we had to move because there were problems in the school district. I heard you out throughout this entire fucking art fixation. What have you done to provide for the family, Colleen, huh? Jack shit. That's what, so I needed a break. So when I met Babe and I was able to take the ring off and escape you for even an hour, nothing gave me more pleasure than just being with someone who actually seemed to care about what was actually happening in my life instead of just trying to weasel their nose in where it didn't belong. You don't mean that. You're so naive. The terrible truth is I used to love you so deeply. But you became one of the most annoying people I've ever known. And my God, all the nagging, the nagging. I couldn't take it anymore. What? She finishes bandaging his leg and takes a breath. I married you because you were the one for me. You didn't make me question everything that was wrong in my life. I felt no sense of shame or limitation when I was with you. What happened to the hopeless romantic that I knew? Tim goes to speak. Shut up, Tim. I'm speaking. 
What happened to the one who would always whisper, I love you, and other sweet things in my ear late at night? All you do now is rant and rave at me whenever you see me being, whenever you see me being a slight inconvenience. If we make it out of here alive, I want you to leave. I want you to move out and I'll be filing for a divorce as soon as I can. How can I trust you after all this? And yes, you've changed as I have, but I don't even know who I married anymore. There is a stranger in my house, an intruder. A crash and a scream from upstairs again. Tim groans as he gets up. Where are you going? To get our daughter and end this. Tim heads for the stairs. Babry enters and lingers in the doorway. Tim struggles, but he swiftly gets up the stairs. We hear the door burst open. Willow screams, a gunshot. Tim stumbles down the stairs. Colleen screams. The door slams and we hear faint laughter. Tim! Tim lands at the bottom of the stairs. Colleen rushes to his side. Babe shakes with fear in the doorway. Colleen? Shh, shh, shh. It's okay. I'm here. Babe, help me. Babe rushes over, and they both carry Tim into the center of the room. Colleen sits with him in her arms on the floor. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for dragging you both into this. Okay. We're going to get you out of here. I love you. I love you. No, no. I love you. I always have. Nothing will ever change. I was selfish. I am selfish. Oh, Tim. You remember how it rained the night before our wedding? It poured and it poured and it even flooded the backyard and, and there was mud everywhere. We had to put down all that plywood the next morning so people wouldn't sink while walking around. It was so warm that day, but not in a bad way. It was comfortable and the air was sweet, and you looked so beautiful. That's how I remember you. That's how I'll always remember you. No matter the argument or the situation, that's how I'll always think of you. I love you. It is with that last line, Tim releases his dying breath. Colleen weeps silently, still holding him. A rustle and a door are heard from upstairs. This way. Babe and Colleen hide themselves beyond the door frame under the stairs. Three of the heavily armed goons come downstairs. They spot Tim's body and poke at him with a barrel of their guns and laugh. Colleen and Babe peek in from the door frame as two goons carry Tim's body to the two behind the, the bar. Those two retreat back upstairs. The remaining goon seems to spot Colleen and Babe, and they immediately re retreat. The goon slowly approaches the doorframe where he jumps in. Nothing there. He lingers a moment and moves slowly out of sight. Colleen and Babe peek in from the other doorway and run back to the center of the room. What now? We have to defend ourselves. Oh. Give me a minute, I'm working on it. Colleen looks around. She spots an empty liquor bottle on the bar and grabs it. Okay, um, I need you to sit here. She sets Babe down in the armchair closest to the door and she conceals herself next to the door frame. After a beat or two of silence, a goon comes back through the door and starts to approach Babe when Colleen smashes the bottle over their head and knocks them out cold. Oh, that was easy. What now? Grab the weapons, then grab the legs. Babe does the so. Then they shove the goon's body into the closet under the stairs. We, we need a plan. You're usually tougher than this. Seeing how, seeing how easy we took this one down, I don't know if I believe you on that one. Besides, now we have these. Colleen goes back to the pile of weapons and belt on the floor. She ruffles through them. Uh, do you know how to use any of these? The magazine falls out of the handgun. Oh, 
Oh, we're doomed. You don't know how to use any of these? I'd use a grenade if we could get 50 yards away. I think I could figure it out. Colleen hands it over to Babe as if it's rotten fruit. Hold on. Colleen goes to the bookshelf, pulls out a thick encyclopedia. Inside it is an antique loaded revolver. I do know how to use this. I watched my dad use it hundreds of times. This ought to buy us. Willow screams from upstairs and we hear a door bolt open. Hide. Babe runs towards the dining room. Colleen runs towards the door next to the bookcase. On the way, she stops and sees the dog and screen door statuette. She grabs it and stashes it off stage. Andre and the goons come bolting down the stairs. Willow is limp over Andre's shoulder. He slumps her down on the couch. There's a lot of noise until Andre notices people are missing. Oye, ¿dónde estás esas chicas? The goons look around and shrug. Get out. The goons fan out. One heads back towards the landing of the stairs. Andre heads towards the bar. While they are busy, one heads towards the doorway where Colleen is hiding. They peek towards the opposite direction of where she is hiding, and we see her arms grab around their mouth and pull them out of view. Andre and the other goon shoot their gaze towards the doorway. Andre motions to the other goon towards that direction as he jumps behind the bar in an attempt to surprise someone. The goon makes it to the door and does the same thing as Andre. No one there. Nadia Lee. Seki Murando. The goon makes their way to the dining room doorway as Andre makes his way to the closet under the stairs. Before Andre can get the door open, Babe swings down from the doorway and kicks him into the room, knocking him out and grabbing his weapons. Andre bolts into action mode as Babe holds him at gunpoint. Mekida esposa. He appro approaches her slow and menacingly. This is all because of you, you know. The suffering could have all been avoided. If you would just behaved like you were trained to do. Babe holds her ground. Where are they hiding? The Amor. I have to kill them so we can return to our beautiful home in Venezuela. Don't you see? We can never be happy as long as any memory of part of Tim's family lives. So why don't you put the toy down, man? Colleen re-enters. She's not going anywhere, and neither are you. With that, you say the mistaken. He grabs Willow off the couch, pulls her to the center of the room, and points a gun at her head. Mom! You let her go. Ya que estamos pun. Un pun de salida. Mm, don't play games with me, motherfucker. You're going to give me my daughter, and you're going to clear out of here. You got that? I don't think you're exactly in the position to be making deals right now. Mom. It's going to be okay, darling. No, I wouldn't be so sure. I might just keep, uh, I just might need to take me a new bride after this is all over. You're going to leave her. You're going to leave and never bother me or my kids or babe ever again. This debt is not paid to you and each one of your family members is dead. That's where you're wrong. You see, your goons are out of the equation. You haven't even noticed one of us has been missing this whole time. My son will be here any second with the police and you're going down, living or dead. I couldn't care less at this point. So I guess you could say the debt is paid when your blood is all over the shag carpet. By now, Colleen is by the bar. Babe is still by the dining room door and Andre is dead center with Willow. All at once with a yell, he throws Willow to the couch, fires a shot, shattering a picture of Colleen and Tim on the mantle. Willow screams, Colleen fires a shot that shatters the hula lamp and Babe has fired a shot into Andre's back. He's stunned for a moment, and then he falls to the floor. Willow and Colleen look at Babe, and she grins. I guess I figured it out. Colleen runs to Willow. Oh, sweetie, are you okay? I think my arm is broken, but I'll manage. I'm just happy you're okay. Wish I could say the same for the hula girl. Who cares? That thing was ugly as hell. You're right, I always hated it. <laughs> Dad didn't make it either, did he? No, no, sweetie, he didn't. 
but just always know that he loved us. Hey, hug. Babe, are you okay? I will be. You know, you can stay with us as long as you need. I'd like that. What are we gonna do about the funeral reception? I'm sure we'll figure something out on top of now planning another funeral for your father. The good thing is you still have me and Rick. And I'll, I'll be, be here as long as you need me. Maybe with your help, I could find my real family too. Sounds like I have a busy week ahead. Speaking of busy, mom. You should go. What? How did you know what I was going to- I heard you talking to Ricky about it before I checked the pantry. Oh, mom. Your art is heard, mine is seen, and I'm gonna have to sell whatever isn't broken since I guess selling the house is going to be out of the question for a bit. What? A house set upon by terrorists isn't a strong selling point? <laughs> Not in this economy. Not to mention the stack of bodies behind the bar in the closet. All your artwork and everything was destroyed? Yeah, I haven't checked yet, but guessing by the state of the statuettes, all except one. Colleen rushes out through the door under the stairs. She returns with the statuette of the dog and the screen door. Something in the universe decided to spare just one. If that's a sign, then I don't know what is. Suddenly, a cluster of red and blue lights outside the windows, and Ricky charges in with a fleet of police. Hey guys, I brought some friends. Well, it's about time. <laughs> Blackout. End of play. <laughs>